Hi, I am Deborah R. Richardson of Deborah R. Richardson LLC, and I work with you to help you clean up your vendor data, clean up your vendor processes so that you can pay the right vendor. Now, this week's Vendor Master File Tip of the Week is to rethink this step when making that confirmation call because vendors are skeptical too. And what step am I talking about? It is leaving a voicemail. And I know many of you have been told or instructed not to leave a voicemail when you're contacting the vendor to confirm banking information. But I will tell you, they're being told the same thing. Now, I took this from a report or from an article uh, from a company called The Title Report, and the article was called Check Fraud and How to Prevent It. And really, they were talking to uh, escrow companies, I guess, who take payments for real estate transactions, because you know they are heavy into uh, fraud too. The fraudsters are taking people's you know, savings for that they were going to use for their down payment. So anyway, this article was giving them some instruction and some advice on how to avoid it. And one of the eight uh, ways to avoid fraud in this area was to never provide bank details on the phone or via email unless you initiated the contact and are certain of the recipient's identity. Well, dang it, isn't that the same uh, information or requirements or criteria that your leadership or your security team or IT team has told you about uh, contacting the vendor for confirmation, right? Not to leave a phone, uh, not to leave a voicemail because you don't want to have to determine whether or not it's the vendor actually contacting you back. Well, this can't work. So there is a way that you can, yes, leave that voicemail and yes, have a way to identify whether or not you're talking to or communicating with your vendor or with an internal or with an internal, actually that's true too, or with an actual froster. And that's using authentication. And when I say authentication, I mean the same way that when you contact your bank, they start asking you two to three identifying questions uh, before they even talk to you about whatever you call to talk about because they want to make sure that you are who you say you are. You can set that up for your vendors that you leave a voicemail and they contact you back and you can ask them two to three identifying questions. And I did do a vendor master file tip of the week on that in the past and it is going to come up next so make sure that you uh, stay on to click through to that video now another video i have or vendor master file tip of the week video that i have is is that confirmation or vendor confirmation for a banking change valid and so those are some tips that you can use to make sure that you're asking the right questions and uh, also whether or not other direct reports or other team members are making it you can share it with them as well to make sure that they are asking the right questions because it, especially if you're not making all of those calls yourself, you really don't know how they're being made. So make sure you check that video out as well. I will have a link in the description. All right. So if you'd like more information on how to improve your vendor process, please go to my website at DebraRRichardson.com for free tools and resources to avoid fraud, regulatory fines, and bad vendor data. Now, if you like over 163 hours of vendor process training, make sure you head on over to training.DebraRRichardson.com for the Vendor Process Training Center. So good luck and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified next Tuesday or next time for the next Vendor Master File Tip of the Week.